Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today, we're going to be interviewing Erin Courier. We're actually going to do a fun thing. We're going to do a walk along in her home studio here in Santa Fe. Uh, her show will be opening on the last Friday of this month, and we're going to get a preview of everything she's working on. Let's go. We are leaving the rail yards now. Um, try not to hit anybody. Backing out of Blue Rain Gallery. Oh, we're cruising near the state capitol. Woohoo! Erin's one of my favorite artists. She's also one of the more unique artists because she does collage and painting, so mixed media. Um, if you had the opportunity to come to my house, which some of the podcasts are produced at, you'll see a collection of paintings of hers uh, that I really love. Okay, we're here at Erin's uh, little casita where she paints. Um, obviously, you can look at her yard, it's inspirational. Uh, one of the wonderful features is this uh, blossoming cherry tree, uh, as well as beautiful roses. I guess you could say she lives a rosy life. Welcome to my studio. And we'll probably need, meet her dog, Noche, too. So <laughs> come on in. Noche. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> oh, wow. This is so beautiful. A self-portrait. Thank you. I think you do a self-portrait almost every show, huh? Or every well, other show. Actually, it's been a few it's years It's been a few years. Now. Yeah. But it used to be fairly regular. Uh, yeah. You know. I haven't done one in about Noche. five years now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that, that came out really nice. Oh, thanks. Spectacular. Mm-hmm. And you can see her dog Noche in here. <laughs> and uh, Erin loves to dance. So a lot of these uh, paintings, you'll see flamenco or tango or stuff like that. Yeah. What is it you like about dancing so much? Um, it gives me a similar joy that drawing mm -hmm. and, and painting and collaging. Too. It's another creative expression. Yeah, it puts you very much in the present moment. And it's like you just completely are 100% fully in the present, like savoring that moment. And I feel that with drawing it some, um, you, you just become so connected with what you're drawing. And it's kind of like visceral, like mm -hmm. as opposed to snapping a cell phone shot. It's so, it can I be so I wish it was so away. easy. I, I just have two left feet and I would step all over your toes. <laughs> That's what dance classes are yeah. for. <laughs> I know, you've been trying to get me into those classes for a while. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, uh, what do you like about this painting of yourself? Well, um, What do you have in here? What's inspirational to you besides, I see pictures of David Bowie and dancing. Yeah. This is a painting of yours. Yeah, there's a lot of reference to my life and things I love. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of birds in it like flying off and kind of flying up. I love to travel, as you know, and that's been a big part of the inspiration behind my work. So there's like birds and airplanes and it's kind of flying out into the world in a whole new chapter. I've been through a lot of transitions in my life the past few years and that's reflected in like you know, all these birds dispersing, but then there's the blue bird of happiness flying toward me. I see you have your corazón exposed. Yeah. Corazón yeah, that's means a, heart. That's a reference to Frida Kahlo. You know that painting of yes. two Fridas? <laughs> and, and I've used it before. Um, some of your viewers might have seen like I did a portrait years ago of my friend Nicolas Herrera holding yeah, a heart. Sacred heart. Mm -hmm. And my last or second to last self-portrait like 
seven years ago, I was holding a heart and I wanted to do that again and just show, because I feel like um, one of my greatest shortcomings, which is also a blessing that I love about myself, is my wide open heart. Yeah. <laughs> my fearless she heart. She does have a wide open heart. <laughs> so I have my heart and the <laughs> heart strings are, are kind of twined around my arm. And then um, paintbrushes. I have, yeah, paintbrushes and a Sharpie marker in my hand. Mm -hmm. And the pair of hawks references um, my longtime partner, Anthony. And so the hawks are like there as part of my art always and part of my heart, but they're also just flying off. And mm -hmm. the only bird that's like coming toward me is this bluebird of happiness. It's a beautiful painting. I really like it. Oh, I like the LA exhibitor tag Aaron Creer up there. Yeah, I reference <laughs> Blue Rain. There's the <laughs> LA art show. There's mm -hmm. um, there's more reference to you and Leia, like down here in Blue Rain, and um, there's the like Sharpie marker yeah. trash. <laughs> this was from Brazil. It, my trip last year to Brazil, I found these torn posters in Sao Paulo, and it says, in, in the darkness, hearts aglow. Mm. And I'm wearing my lucky boots, and um, there's like Guadalupe and the Buddha up here. So if anybody um, gets a chance to meet Erin, um, a lot of times she's in her army boots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be in a beautiful dress and then the army boots. So. And there's the World Cup coffee from oh, Taos. Oh, yeah, from Taos. That you guys know yeah. well. And I love that World Cup coffee and it says resist mediocrity. So the meaning is like triple layered because it's, you know, the world and traveling, but it's also my roots in Taos and it's also coffee that i love and so if anybody ever owns a an aaron career uh painting you're, you're very blessed but there's inspirational words in the trash all over the painting aren't there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one yeah. of the first paintings i bought was the ecuadorian shoeboy and uh that used to be in my ex exercise room and there's all these motivational oh, cool. words that you put in there <laughs> <laughs> so it makes me lift harder and uh, exercise longer you know oh, that's awesome. <laughs> let's go to this painting because this one's cool and so these these are old adobe homes don't have a lot of synthetic light. Uh, the electricity just wasn't in there. So Erin brings in her studio lights uh, to help see a little bit better. Um, tell us a little bit about this painting, Erin. Um, these are the three modernist, Italian modernist poets, Saba, Montale, and Ungaretti. And they... All this new work I'm doing is about um, about inspiration. Like I've reflected this past year on all the places I've been and the people I've met and what's inspired me most. And I kind of wanted to celebrate some of those ideas in this work. And one has been poetry has been a big part of my life. And, yeah. and these three poets in particular, they lived in um, the early 1900s in Italy. And can, can you tell us a little about each one or collectively, or how would you want to talk about that? Well, they're really influential to um, the, the beats later on. And, um, and in this piece, like because of the era they're from, mm -hmm. I had this idea of wanting to use like all kind of monochromatic, like all browns and mm -hmm. earth tones. It's a different color palette than most of your uh, paintings. Yeah. Because it has, I think maybe, did you do that to give it more of a historical context for the time period? Well, yeah, it definitely has that feel. And mm -hmm. then I also realized, and I hadn't intended this, but it's like the exact warmth and palette you feel in Italy, like mm -hmm. walking down the streets of Rome, you know, those ochre and mm -hmm. and um, burnt sienna. So on the on the circular part, are those coasters? Yeah. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> yeah, one of my um, 
collectors who you're friends with as well was in Paris and she brought back all, she was at a cafe and they had these coasters of all the zodiac signs and she and her daughter collected all of them off oh, tables nice. and brought them back <laughs> and then there's also this coconut bliss ice cream which was my favorite personal favorite and <laughs> <laughs> And then this piece is kind of special um, in the sense that like I've, I've been returning more to like the heavily collage work I've done yes. in the past. And mm -hmm. I wanted to bring that into this. So all their so, faces and hands and everything are collaged. So normally uh, a lot of her paintings are like her self-portrait, a mixture of paint and collage versus something like this, which you're looking at is pure collage. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And that and would be the difference. Mm -hmm. This piece too. And, and uh, this is a Indian reference? Yeah, it's one of the cave temple. Um, I did a bunch of work over the years of based on the Buddhist cave temples in Ajanta, India. Mm -hmm. They were really inspiring to me and really beautiful. It's kind of like the Sistine Chapel, but in caves and yeah. like um, just these elaborate, like breathtaking wall paintings. And so that piece is references that and yeah. it's completely collaged. Pure collage. Well. There are two more um, behind my portrait too that and Erin has a lot of muscles she's always moving <laughs> these big paintings around <laughs> yeah here's some um, a couple more that the three of them actually work well together i think we used to... uh this one for an advertisement didn't we mm -hmm. it came out really nice in the santa fe magazine oh thanks yeah, yeah. it turned a, out very beautiful um, Cave temple dancer. Yeah. And I liked that too. I realized as I was delving into the Ajanta cave temple work that it, it, it all relates to like these threads of my life. Like recently I've been really into mural work again. And those cave temples are, they have a correlation to you know, the Mexican muralists mm -hmm. that have really influenced my work and um, also dancing. There's all these dancers in this Kind of a, a mix, mixture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these are um, cave temple lovers. There's my Leroy Garcia, my beloved. <laughs> <laughs> One of my um, skulls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a little bit of brown sugar in your house. <laughs> this one, um, I'm not sure if your camera will catch it, but there's a lot of humor, a lot of eroticism. It's about um, just love and sex and passion. And there's some um, Italian porn comics <laughs> that I found in Rome that I layered in and, and some like kind of nude playboy playing cards and stuff like that but it's all about um yeah romantic love and someone pointed out to me that the palette is a little bit of a departure from what i normally do is that because of the pinkish nature or or the gold yeah um the gold. this one i played around with a lot like i kept trying out different background colors and and colors for their their garments and then i remembered my i had done that big mariachi piece mm -hmm. on female mariachis and it had this like deep magenta and sky blue and and ochre and i thought oh that's it i want to do that again but then later a friend pointed out that it's the exact tones that you see in india all the time i spent a few months in india and this is actually the tonal the the palette mm -hmm. so all this work i mean that's kind of a cool unintentional thing that happened with the italian poets and the um cave temple pieces 
Um, I can see in front of us a, uh, another painting that's developing. This is a, uh, a painting uh, that's in process. And this is what they look like before Erin uh, starts supplying collage, her, her refuse or trash pieces that she integrates in. Um, tell us a little bit about your inspiration. I see the flamenco, or is that tango? That's tango, huh? Yeah, that's flamenco. Or flamenco. Mm -hmm. And then it's more like Pueblo or native people. Yeah, what uh -huh. this piece is, I wanted to do this for a long time and I've done a lot of sketches and played around with it and I finally hit on like what what I wanted to express and it's the three graces. I've oh. long had this idea of like, I wanna do three graces, but totally New Mexico style. And I thought this show is a perfect time to do it because more than anything else, more than like India and poetry and um, anything, like New Mexico really inspires my work. Yeah. My, my palette, the artists, the dance, the land, all of it. And so I really wanted to celebrate everything I love about New Mexico. And in down the to form the license like, plate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and That's so nice. I have. Um, yeah, I referenced um, flamenco, and which is also like a reference to dance, and and um, and also like um, Europe and North Africa and that part of the world. But then I have the Americas and the pueblos, and um, this woman is like she's kind of symbolic of the custodian of the land and of um, everything that beautiful that grows and that. That's that, a, like um, a corn, corn seedling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then in the center here is she's representative of the arts and painting and um, well, just like all art. Yeah. I wanted all three of them to be symbolic, but also symbolic of like, all the the um, geographies in the world that converge to this place, you know, that Hispanic and indigenous and European and like um, all the the peoples that have come here. Yeah. So they're they're like all three and all three creative um, representations of the creativity in New Mexico. And then, of course, the lowrider scene. My, mm -hmm. my good friend, who's also your good friend, Nicolas. Yeah, he, <laughs> the Nicolas. Um, gave me permission to put his shabby in the <laughs> background. And I really, it was tricky. It was very challenging. I struggled with that part of it. And, yeah. But I feel that that I finally nailed it. I'm happy with it. Yeah, so. it's, it's coming out beautiful. I like the construct. Sometimes oh, the hardest thanks. part of being an artist is developing a scene in your head and then putting it uh, on, on a board. But if you've ever, yeah. if you've ever been uh, with Aaron Courier, even for a short, quick lunch, she'll usually be there sketching you out. Uh -huh. And so <laughs> all this stuff is sketched out in smaller sketches and where she develops an idea. And sometimes the sketch doesn't exactly mirror what's on here, but it's an interesting process. And, uh, but that yeah. is a great part of being an artist is that construct. That's the hardest part, I think. And also the, yeah. the other thing I had in mind <clears throat> with this is um, that I did that big painting of Ralph, Toby and Fernanda, yeah. the Trace Homies painting that is going to be on permanent exhibition at um, Escondido. At yeah, the um, like part owners of Escondida own that painting, and they've they want to share it with everyone. It's and, a beautiful painting. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really thanks. Nice. So I wanted to do like a female counterpart, and there are so many New Mexican women I wanted to put in that <laughs> painting. And eventually, I was like, I can't even go there. That's I think you know that the rest the, of my life. I think painting. you know that the construct perfect. And so I decided instead just to do like representations of all women of New Mexico. Yeah, like I creative. think you captured it. 
Oh, pretty good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and then there's um, yeah. Carlito Gardel behind you. So, yeah, tell us about this one. Um, so, one of the most inspiring places, in, in addition to New Mexico, for me is um, Argentina and Buenos Aires. I really love it, and I've been a number of times. And um, that whole city is just all about like music, dance, art. It's like <laughs> drawing, your second homeland. Painting, poetry. <laughs> and um, tango is such a huge part of it, like writing tango, tango orchestras, tango musicians and dancers and um, films and like just hundreds of thousands of people are very into that there. And their God is. Um, Carlos Gardel is like a god to them, like Elvis. Yeah, like Elvis. <laughs> yeah. Was he an actor or something? Yeah, or he did films film? too and he mm -hmm. sang and he was um, just this incredible tango singer and musician. And, and so I have this um, painting in homage to him, but him as the Buddha. Yeah. And he's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of scraps and trash and like sugar packets from Buenos Aires and, um, you know, like different milonga flyers for all these tango dances and napkins from cafes in Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. When I was there, I went to his grave to pay my respects and there's his grave is like this life-size statue of him <laughs> and there's been a continuous cigarette in his hand and since people just he died it. like you know like almost a century or half a century ago. Was he, he was like 1940s or so um or 30s yeah 30s 40s probably yeah, yeah. and um and there are always people at his grave like playing music and dancing and <laughs> it's like covered with flowers and oh, tango that's, shoes. That's a nice and, story. That's a nice story. Yeah. Well, let's go show us the Anthony piece. I'm okay. excited to see that. Yeah. Woo, that's a big one. We are now in uh, Aaron Courier's bedroom. <laughs> 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 and this is a picture of this guy named Anthony. So who is this Anthony guy? Um, this is Anthony Hassett, my late partner. We were together 21 years and traveled all over. And he was an excellent writer, poet, artist in his own right, and um, an incredible artist. And I've long wanted to just do a, a large scale piece in homage to him. And so, um, I love the Bowie this, stuff. Like, personal <laughs> reference. Yeah, Bowie was his favorite, and he actually knew him too. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Well, he, uh, Anthony, he grew up in um, Los Angeles, right? Mm hmm. And uh, with a, a myriad of maybe movie stars or movie stars' children and stuff like that. So he's pretty connected in, in that scene, right? Yeah, yeah. His family was part of the whole movie industry, but he fled all that as a teenager and he's really kind of this bohemian poet. And he went and studied with William Burroughs at Naropa Institute and Allen Ginsberg mm -hmm. and traveled all over the world. And he's was, he was good at everything. He was like an incredible cook and musician and like he could have done anything he was a he, good human he, being he, yeah. he just was uh, we miss him yeah he had a huge heart above all else and so this I, piece like um, <laughs> yeah and he loves small dogs that's noche and our dog foca and when i met him he had um frankie and ollie so I put his, his beloved small This is a dogs. great homage to him. This is fantastic, Aaron. Oh, I think it's one of my favorite pieces ever. And Ganesh was important to him. Mm -hmm. And um, and he was he grew up Catholic. So I have, like, he did a lot of Buddhist meditation. So I have, like, 
reference to all the layers of, you know, his spirituality. And he loved hawks. And after he passed away, I would always see a pair of hawks everywhere I'd go in the world. Like when we, I was with someone who loved him and, and um, who he loved that we'd be talking and a pair of hawks would come, mm -hmm. whether it was like in Rome or Hollywood or New England, or these hawks would come and coast over us. And so that's what that is. You know, um, I was interviewing uh, Hib Sabin today and um, we were talking about shamanism and one of his favorite things is birds. And we we're talking about yeah, me too. The, the spiritual nature of birds bringing messages to you. Uh, yeah. or signs of things yeah. and you find that through all religions and cultures and people uh, so that's pretty cool yeah I, like that. I think humans have always been like so in tune to that and it's only been recently that less so you know with technology and but there's still I think um, any of us that can, can tap into that if we take any amount of time just to be still and quiet and present like yeah. the natural world is very much yeah um one thing i also knew about tony uh he he was a man of great stature <laughs> he had some big <laughs> muscles i used to tell him tony tony take him out outside and whack him <laughs> and, and people irritated me but no he's a great guy uh, we miss him yes i'm glad you did this Erin. oh it's thanks. very beautiful thank you for doing that are there any other paintings or yeah. That you want to talk about? Um, I can show you the Tangara piece mm -hmm. in the okay. kitchen here. So we're now traveling to the kitchen. It's usually so bright here in the like. Oh, in the it's morning, a little cloudy outside though. Yeah. Oh. But I could turn a couple lights on. Oh, you have a El Moises in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gave me that. Piece. Yeah, I saw that. That's nice. I like El Moises. Oh, is it behind here? And Arthur. Yeah. Let me move this off the way a little bit. Okay. Stand over here. Let's see what you can tell us about this one. Um, this one is Tangera, and it's another um, homage to dancing. And, <laughs> okay. and I have a lot of reference to tango dance. Like the eight is... Um, is the ocho is like one of the main moves in like every figure in tango dance. There's forward ochos, back ochos. Um, I have, this is my good friend James, and these are flyers from a workshop he did. Um, there's more trash, I think, from Buenos Aires. And I decided last minute, like the piece was pretty much done, and then I thought, that how I want to give her a tattoo. And Carlito. I thought of um, Carlos Gardel, <laughs> Carlito <laughs> Gardel. That's awesome. <laughs> and then there's just, um, you know, like reference to just the feminine spirit and feminine grace and strength. So there's all women from all different cultures in the background. Um, our Lady of Guadalupe, the Joshua tree. There's, um, yeah, I have like Topo Chico, all sorts of trash too. Somebody and, doesn't like Topo Chico around here. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a big poster from South America that says guitarra on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. I like the, the emotion that you've captured on this one. Oh, thanks. Really nice. And the Carlito tattoo. <laughs> That's nice. Okay. So I'd like to thank Erin for inviting us into her home and giving us a little advanced preview of her show. It's come out very good. It's turned out very well. And we're excited to display all this in a, in a couple weeks. The last Friday of this month, all of this stuff will be hung up at Blue Rain Gallery here in Santa Fe. So I'd like to encourage everybody to come over and, and visit Erin, get to know her beautiful spirit. Uh, I'd like to encourage people to subscribe to our podcast by going to any of the platforms, or you can go to blu-raingallery.com under the menu bar, podcast. 
and you can see Aaron there. I also like to encourage people to bring art into their everyday life by visiting our online store, BlueRainPrintShop.com. Thank you, Aaron. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see you guys. Yeah, nice to see you too. <laughs>